Jesus, for the things he 
does and all of his mercy and all of his love the pit of the rider could ride every day and even his words could never contain how much I
cross. He did go to the cross for us. And, and you know, without uh, him shedding his blood, there would be no remission of sin. I thank God this morning for what he is to me and what he means to me. And I praise him for every day that he gives me. Jeremiah said, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Look what he's saying here. He told Jeremiah, he said, I have loved you, not with a iffy love. I'm not loving you when you're good. I'm not loving you when you give me something. He said, I am loving you with an ever, everybody say everlasting. Everlasting means forever. In other words, the love of Almighty God is not going to change. Somebody said, I messed up today. He still loves you. I said something I should have said. He still loves you. I acted in a way that I should not have acted. He still loves you. You know why? Because he never changes his love about you. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our God never changes. Come on, can someone say amen? When you feel like nobody loves you, Stop and think for just a moment. God has an everlasting love for you and me. Yes. Yes. Amen. I've had people actually tell me, I don't like you. <laughs> have that ever happened to you? Yeah. 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 Be, a, be a pastor then. Yeah. Just, just be a preacher. Yeah. I don't like what you said to me. I, I don't like what you preach. You know, I, I don't like how you do things. I don't like that. Can I tell you again? Of course, you and that bothers me. I don't want someone walk up to me and say, I hate your guts. I kind of like my guts. I kind of like I need them, you know. But how many of again, you cannot please everybody. Amen. And we have to begin to realize that the one that really loves us above everybody else is God himself. Because the Bible teaches you and I that God is. How many of God is, that means he exists. And why does he exist? And why does he exist? Because God is love. He loves you and I. He cares about you and I. And he will love us even when we're not loving him. He loved us. Even those that have backslidden, the Bible said he's married to a backslider. Man, think about that. He loves us. He loves us. He really does. And again, it's an everlasting love. So that love that God has for us is never going to change. Not only about you folks, but there have been times in my life I wondered if God still loved me. I really have. I thought, how could you love someone like me? How could you use someone like me? God, God you know, I'm a mess. Well, I have to go back into the Word of God begin to realize that God never changes. He don't change His love. I mean, that, folks, I'm going to tell you right now, we, we are loved. Tell somebody, says, I am, tell, tell, tell somebody, I'm loved. I am loved. How many of those again? We're His children. And He loves us. Amen. And again, you think in our own life again about he's the same yesterday, today, forever. That means he loved me yesterday. He loves me today. He'll love me tomorrow. He'll love me the next day. He'll love me next week. He'll love me next month. He'll love me next year. Amen. If I see 2024 roll around, he'll still going to love me. Amen. And if some of you or myself included walk away from God completely, he'll still love me. Amen. Because he cannot change. His love never changes. Let me stop and think, kind of interject this right here. Some of you lose your peace. Why do we lose our peace? It's because we try to handle our own problems. Come on now. We think we can do this. We want things fixed right now, so we kind of tend to get right. I, you know, I've worked on cars all my life when I was growing up. You know, back then, you could do pretty well. You had points. You had a distributor cap, you had, you had spark plugs, you had, you had wires and spark plugs. And I, 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 I re, I've done many carburetors, rebuilt them. I, I pulled transmissions, I rebuilt them. But today it's a different ball game. Yes. Unless my brain's computerized, I do not have the means to do that. Amen? But I'm telling you right now, a lot of things in our life that we used to do by ourselves, we can no longer do it, especially as we get older. And that will rob us of our peace because we're, I don't know about you, but I'm a hands-on person. Uh, I don't ask people to help me. I don't get there and do it myself. But as I got older, I, I begin to find out that I can't do and be what I used to be. That bothers me. That bothers me when I cannot do what I used to do three, four, five years ago. And that starts troubling my mind because I want to do it. And all of a sudden, I begin to be troubled and I'm losing my peace because I am not, again, letting God bring that peace in my life. How many know that when you go through something and you worry about it, it will rob you of your peace? 
Jesus Christ does not want you to have a hatred in your life. He does not want you to be angry in your life. He doesn't want you to be troubled in your life. He wants that peace to be there. Yeah. If you look back in John chapter 14 and 27, Jesus told his disciples before he left this world, and remind you again, Jesus had already died on the cross. He left them once by dying on the cross, but he was placed in the tomb. On the third day, he resurrected, and he came back to them. Yeah. Now in John 14, he said, I'm leaving you again. Yeah. And their hearts were sorrowful. And their peace was gone. But in John 14, 27, he said, let not your heart be troubled. John 14 tells us that. He said, my peace I give unto you. Yes. Not as the world giveth, do I give unto you. But let not your heart be troubled, and neither be afraid. <laughs> Did you hear what that verse just said to you and I? My peace I give, not the world, right. not your money, not the doctor, not someone counseling you. He said, my peace, if, if he is peace. If he is in me, I've already got the peace. You know why? Because the peace of God never changes. You can have it on a good day. You can have it on a bad day. You can have it in a crisis in your life. It doesn't matter what you go through. He said, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, do I give it to you. Let not your heart be troubled. And neither let it be afraid. Folks, that's a hard thing. Yeah. Don't let your heart be troubled or be afraid. Right. I'm telling you right now, sometimes I... I'm falling apart at the seam. That's an ugly thing when your seam falls apart. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, he never changes his love, he never changes the peace. You can be having one of the worst storms of your life and still be at peace. That's what the world can't understand now, child of God. How, how can that be? Because he never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can someone say amen? amen. When the Apostle Paul was headed toward Jerusalem, he had been warned not to go to Jerusalem because things were going to be bad for him there. And they were telling Paul, don't you go to Jerusalem. But Paul said, I must go. Yeah. Hear what Paul said about going to Jerusalem. He said, behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not know the things that befall me there, save this, that the Holy Ghost had witnessed to me that bonds and afflictions abide me there. Now Paul was telling him back, don't you go there, Paul. Paul said, no, I'm going to go bound in the spirit of Jerusalem. And I know things are going to happen there. And I, th I know things are going to befall me there. And I know I'm going to be put in jail there. And I know things are going to look bad for me. He said, but none of these things move me. Are you hearing me this morning? He said, hey, I hear what you're saying, and I know what the Holy Ghost said I'm going to go through. He said, but none of these things move me, and neither do I count my life dearer to me. Right. What is Paul saying? Through it all, I'm going to have peace of God. Through it all, the Holy Ghost has got my back. Through it all, I'm going to be a winner. Through it all, I'm coming out with victory on the other side. Even Paul would say, if I live, I'm the Lord. If I die, I'm the Lord. So if I live or if I die, I'm the Lord. Philippians 121 tells us also, again, that he, again, knows that he's in a win-win situation. He said, for me to live is Christ, but for me to die is gay. Amen. That's peace, folks. Amen. I've walked in the hospital room and I heard many people tell me, don't pray for me. I'm dying. I'm leaving here. Yeah. How many can say that this morning? Yeah. How many can say, Lord, just kill me right now? <laughs> Come on, I think of what I'm saying. Yeah. I've got so much peace in my life, fear, I have no fear about death. Because again, that's what he's saying to you and I. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth do I give to you, but let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. What's the biggest fear we have today? Yeah. Death. Yeah. How do you know, preacher? Let me tell you how I know. I know when we're in good health, we worry about this finances and jobs and gain and I mean we all got too much stuff anyway. Those three of you said yes, the rest of you didn't lie to me. I'm telling you this morning that most most people I've been people I've been around their diet, they just say I wish I had worked more hours. I wish I had more money. 
I wish I'd had more houses in the world I've never baptized. What they're saying is, is everything all right between me and God? How many know again, that's the biggest fear that we have is death. But how many know uh, that a man called Jesus Christ that hung on Mount Calvary over 2,000 years ago, he defeated hell and he defeated death on Mount Calvary. And today you and I can have peace while we're living here. And even in death, we can have peace. Can someone say amen? amen. Glory be to God. Even when Stephen, a deacon of the church, Preached a sermon. He said, you stiff-necked. Yeah. You got circumcised. You always resist the Holy Ghost like your fathers did. Man, they hated him. Yeah, they, did. they came up on him, and grown men started biting on him. Yeah. Right, can you imagine that? And Stephen, again, was there being persecuted. They let him out of the city and stoned him. Yeah, and while they were stoning him, he looked up and saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Anybody believe he had peace about this? Anybody believe that while they were stoning him, he was saying it's okay? Yeah. It's okay. God's got this. Amen. Now I look up and how many know it again? When you look up and see Jesus standing up there, you got a good feeling about this. Everything's going to be all right. Come on. How many know it is? It's because of Jesus Christ and the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. Right. Right, let, me, let, me, let me tell you this. We're all going to die. Yeah. When, that, when is that going to be? I don't know. But Hebrews 9 27 tells you and I that it's the point that the man wants to die. But after this, the judgment, we all have an appointment to keep. And if we don't get this peace right, we're going to be in trouble in the day of death. Yeah. I want to lay down on that bed and say, I'm ready. Yeah. I want to lay down on that bed. I, I want to hear angels singing. <laughs> I, I, I want to see people in heaven. I, I, I want to sit the presence of Almighty God. I, I don't want to be fearful about anything. Because God never gave me a spirit of fear, but of love and the power of a sound mind. Because he never changes. Can someone say amen? If he gave it to me when I got saved, I still got it today. All the patriarchs of old had it, and I believe we still have it today. The same God they serve, and the same God that we serve. And I believe we have peace in the midst of our storm. Stephen was stoned to death. Looking up to Jesus. As he left this world, he said, Father, don't lay this sin to their charge. Right. He was forgiven people. Right. He wasn't worried. Sometimes we don't know how we're going to make it. But I'm telling you right now, he's the same God. Yes, he is. How many know what the greatest miracle was in your whole entire life? Yeah. Been saved. Yeah. How long did it take you to get saved? Just instantly. Yeah. You, whosoever called upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But after that, after salvation, it's a hard road to go. God just gave you the greatest miracle you'll ever have, and now we can't even believe him for a dollar in our pocket. Or a hangnail on our toe. Come on now. Somebody say amen. amen. And we worry about everything. Can I tell you again? The greatest worry I had before I got saved is my soul was bound for hell. And when I got saved, that was taken care of. But I'm telling you right now, if my God can do that for me, my God can do anything. My God had the cattle on a thousand hills. He will supply my every need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus because he never changes. It's constant. He never changes. He never changes in love. He never changes in peace. Many good authors are in this world today, and they write books, and then they come out with revised editions of books. Sometimes when they revise the book, it means that they reprint them, but sometimes they'll go back in the book and start changing some things they want to change before they revise it again. And they'll add things or take away. Aren't you glad we have a Bible? Aren't you glad we know who the author is? Aren't you glad again it was written by men of old and they were moved on by the Holy Ghost? Aren't you glad that when you read your Bible, God does not say, hold on just a minute, don't read that page right there, I'm going to tear it out. Don't you go by that page, I'm going to revise it. God has never said that, and God never will. You know why? Because God's word is forever settled in heaven. It will never change. It's the same Bible. I don't know about you, but I don't need a revised version. I don't need an updated version. I've got the Father. I've got the Son. I've got the word on the inside of me, and I know for a fact it is steadfast. It will never change. Preacher, have you got scripture for that? Yes, I do. Well, thank you for asking me. Psalms 119, 89. David said forever. Right. How many know what forever is? Yeah. A long time. 
Forever is forever. Forever is forever. I can say forever to look up back and it's still going to be forever. When I get to heaven, I'll be there forever. I'm not coming back here. I'm not going to be back in this old world. Now, we'll come back to the earth, but it's going to be a different earth. Amen. Uh, how many knows again? But when I come back to this old world of sin anymore, it's going to, again, forever things are settled in heaven. But when it said, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. I don't care what man or what woman preaches the gospel. If they change this, they're not preaching the word. Because God's word doesn't change it. Amen. How many knows again that God and Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? And how many here know that Jesus is the word anyway, and he never changes? God's word is forever settled in heaven. I'm talking about the things of God never change. His love never changes. Peace never changes. His word never changes. When I read this today, and I, I know there's different verses out there today, uh, all kinds of NIVs and do a new, new living word and all kinds of things. Somebody said they do that to make it easier for people to understand. Oh, can I just cure about him? The Bible said if the gospel be hid, it's hid to them that's lost. And it also tells you and I again that God will give us a book of remembrance and understanding. If you want to know something, go to God in prayer. The Bible should not be a hard thing to figure out. If you do, again, go to church and hear the preacher preach or read your Bible, go to, or go to Bible study, again, read the Bible, again, study this stuff. We don't need to be changing the Word. We need to be changing. The Word needs to be changing us. Can someone say amen? Let me say it again. Don't change the Word. Let the Word change you. And when the Word changes you, you'll get a better understanding. Can someone say amen? I remember when I was in the military, we had an SOP, which is a Standard Operation Procedure Manual. And when we did not know how to do something, we'd go to the manual and look at that manual, and it tells you step by step what to do. There have been some men I was stationed with that did not go to the Standard Operation Procedure Manual, and they did it and messed it up. One man put a, uh, an APC, an armor first snow carrier that we had in, in Texas. Uh, we, were in the, we were in the water, those things can float had the flashboard in front, and I, I was behind him in one tank, and he was in the other, and all of a sudden I see him getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and he sunk that thing in Lake Belton. And when he sunk that thing in Lake Belton, what happened, he did not put the drain plug back in, and while he was in that lake, the water came in and sunk that, and that cost the thousands and billions of dollars, and he got court-martialed. Oh, yeah. You know what happened to him? He had a manual. Yeah. He had a checklist to go by and look at that manual. How I many of sometimes we seek our own self but not going by the manual, which is called the Word of God. It's forever settled in heaven. If you know what to do, if you need to know what to do, how to walk and how to talk and how to live, you get to the Bible. B-I-B-L-E, basic, basic instructions before we leave an earth. Open your Bible, look at the manual. As, oh, boy, I, I love when people say, I'm going to wing it. When you say you're going to wing it, your wings are going to be broken. Sometimes they will be clipped off and you're going to crash and burn. Now, what am I saying about the, about the Bible? It never changes. You can stake your life on the Word of God. The love of God never changes. Peace never changes. The Word of God never changes. And I already mentioned this when we had second miss service, but the mercy never changes. The mercy of God never changes. Look here at Psalm 106 1. David said, Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes. That by itself right there ought to make you want to shout. Yes. But that's not the end of it. For his mercy, everybody say this word with me, endureth forever. Amen. What again is forever? Yes. It's forever. Amen. It's never going to change. The mercy of God does not change. And all the words again, we as God's people need to begin to realize that that verse, Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. He's not going to change. And yet we want to change the word. We want to change God's worship. 
How many knows again we got churches across America today, amen, that's not worshiping in spirit. They're worshiping by traditional uh, traditions their own way. They want performance more than they want the spirit, and they'll get up there and they'll do things in themselves only to entertain other people. But I'm telling you right now, I still want the Holy Ghost to be alive in me. And I want to be in the Holy Ghost service, and I want the anointing to be there. And when I lift my hand, I want the heaven to open up and the glory of God come down. Can someone say amen? The mercy of God is there for us. Sometimes we're hard on ourselves. I, I know I'm hard on myself. I don't know about you other preachers. I usually sometimes go home and on the way home, right? I'm sitting in my office, I'm thinking, but what I, what I, what I preached this morning, I should have said this, and I should have said that, and I could have done a little better job. And I start critiquing myself. And when you critique yourself, you're like, oh, no, I did, a, I did a bad job. I don't know why I didn't say that. Well, because the Holy Ghost didn't tell you to say that. So I have to get a wise up and get to find out I said what God told me to say. Otherwise, don't say it. Amen? Amen. We can always look at ourselves and find fault with ourselves. But how many of you get, you can't find fault with the God inside of you? God, I mean, I'm telling you right now, he, he's perfect. Come on now. And he never changed. Praise the Lord. And we can have God have control of us. Man, look what we would be. If we would come into a service and let the Holy Ghost control the service, look at the kind of service we'd have, like we had last night. Can someone say amen to that? I mean, we had a Holy Ghost time in this house. You know why? Because man got out of the way and let God have his way because God never changes. He knows how to fix us. Amen. He knows what we need. Amen. His love never changes. His peace never changes. His word never changes. His mercy never changes. I'm going to go one step further before I close this morning. His power never changes. It's amazing to me how people pray for someone. They speak everything but the word to the people. I know again that we always have to go through Jesus Christ to ask anything. The power of God is just as real. In my lifetime, I've seen the dead raised. I've seen the lame walk. The deaf hear. The blind see. In my lifetime. And I'm not that old, I don't think. I've seen that. You know why that is? Man did not do that. Preachers did not do that. They want to take credit for that. But I'm telling you right now, it's through and by the power of the Holy Ghost. How many of those again, Jesus told the disciples, Behold, I give you power against all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Amen. Look what it says in Psalm 62, 11. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. It's through Him. A God that never changes through Him. Then we have power. Now, well, many of us are just struggling to get through life. <laughs> but can I remind you again that we are blessed because God is the blesser. And I'm telling you right now, if we can learn to trust in Him and begin to realize that God did not change His mind about you, how many of you thought He's always for you? How many of God has a plan for you? God wants to work that plan out in your life. He's not against you. Uh, again, when I, 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 I got four children. And when they messed up, I corrected them, but they were still my children. Right, right. And yet today, they're married and older and uh, I want to say wiser, but I'll stop at that. <laughs> Even today, I still want to meddle a little bit. Even now today, I still want to go to my children when they're in their 40s and 50s and say, can I give you some advice? I have to watch myself. Yeah. But can I remind you again? They're going to do what they want to do. That's right. But when you come down to God's power, God says, I'll do what I want to do if you let me. We can have a better life, folks. Yeah. I, I meet people sometime and I say, how you doing? They say, well, I'm getting by. Getting by what? What are you getting by with? Yeah. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just making this through. Oh, I've had better days. How many ever heard this kind of talk? How many ever had that kind of talk with you? Yeah. I have. But you realize that if we can keep in mind that God never changes. I am loved. I have peace. I have the word. I have mercy. I've got power. Because he never changes. You know, it's like it's like saying 110 and not 10 electrically. Folks, you can't change 110. If you change it, it might become 220. But you can't change the 110. 
It's still going to be 110. It's going to be 220 electrically. You, you can't change that. It, that, that. That's a given. And so many times we're trying to change God. But God says, hold on. You can't do that to me. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come get a song to understand tonight. This morning, let's all pray. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't worry so much about this world. Don't worry so much about what you're going through. Keep it all to the Lord. and Begin to realize again that He loves you. He's a merciful God. This word is settled in heaven. It works, folks. It works. You know, uh, you go to a doctor and he'll give you some medication for pain or whatever it may be. And you take that and the pain goes away. And you go back to see the doctor the next week and what's he going to ask you? What I gave you, did it work? And you're going to say yes. Let me ask you a question. What God, what God gave us, have you found out that it works? Have you found out that it works for you? See, you don't need a pill. You need the gospel. You do. And apply it to your life. I think we'll be happier, joyful, more delivered, more peace, more, more everything in our life would be there because God said, I'm not changing. If God's not going to change, guess who needs to change? We do. And how do we change? I give it all to Him. He said, I believe. I believe God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's all pray so far. We're back here tonight at 6 o'clock. Bring somebody with you. Do not forget in the morning at 10 o'clock we're here for Bible study. So still going to be talking about the blessings of the Lord, all the blessings of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I think it's a good thing to hear about. Amen. Amen. Some of you that's retired, like we come out and be with us. If you're home uh, at 10 o'clock and you're a lazy boy, I pray you will break it too, Don. No, 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 no. Just, just, just come out and be with us. All right, I'm going to ask everybody to stand. Thanks for coming out this morning. Again, happy to be here, everybody. And uh, see you back tonight. All right, say this with me. You ready? Yes, and good. Uh,